Hey Christine and everybody, I'm making some starch biopolymer here. Try to get it in the light. Yeah? And this is gonna get mixed with a whole bunch of Ladra coffee grounds. Cafe Ladra coffee grounds. Fabulous. More light in here. Now, this is supposed to end up clear, but the problem is I had to use these glycerin suppositories rather than liquid glycerin, and it's got some extra filler in it, and I don't know whether it's screwing with the chemistry, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm trying to cook off some of the water so it'll dry by Wednesday. It looks like these suppositories have fully dissolved. Um, should be all right. Mix some coffee grounds in to put a cup and a half, maybe. They're beautiful coffee grounds, they're very fine. Maybe a cup, start with a cup, see how that mixes in. Okay, mixing in nicely. very well mixed. It's making a remarkable paste. I have no idea if this would be useful for anything. I'm gonna put some more in there, why not? I think the more coffee grounds I add, the um, faster it will dry and the stiffer the resulting coating will be. I'm gonna be coating this plywood board that I had laying around. It smells really good, actually. There's a little bit of vinegar smell from the um, the acid, the acidifying the, the starch, but the coffee completely covers it up. Oh man, I need an espresso. All right, so now I got about two and a half cups of amazingly brown crap. <laughs> um, very, very black with a pretty fine grain texture, and that's exactly what I want. Now let's get this out on the board. I'm gonna try two different methods. One of them, just spreading. So I'm gonna make, I don't know, two batches, I guess. There we go. And, and then it's sort of like decorating a cake. Let me just make sure that Covered here. Let's get that off the heat for just a second. Um, and you kind of, I'm thinking sort of like uh, spreading plaster or something. Um, there you go. Oh, shoot, there's a little piece of suppository screwing up the works. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Who made up that word suppository anyway? It's such an awful thing to have to say. You know, you're already sick. Dang, that's harsh. Okay, so one of the things that I was a little worried about is adhesion. And so far, it looks to be pretty good. Um, sticking, adhesion. Is a, it's a cool sounding word for sticking. You guys know that. Alright. Put a little sort of English on the edges to get that covered. There we go. Awesome. And I'm just trying to smooth this out by smoothing to get a little bit of texture. This might take a little too long for use in real projects, but who knows, you never know until you try, right? And this is gonna be the side that I use wax paper to smooth it. I'm hoping, hoping, 
that we can use the direct to substrate printer and just print straight onto this. So I wanted to print white on the blackest thing I could possibly make. And I thought coffee grounds was about as close as I was going to get. Um, you can get these coffee grounds for free from Lodro, from Starbucks, from just about everywhere. Uh, and then starch is pretty easy to grow locally. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, you probably get potato starch. They make a lot of french fries in Idaho. And in the process, they have a lot of waste starch that just goes down the drain. And you might be able to get it. I don't know if it would be food grade, but it doesn't really need to be, right? Because you're just printing on it. Oh, there's the other chunk of suppository. Okay. I don't really know if this stuff has a pot life. Pot life is usually the amount of time you have to work with it before it hardens or gets more brittle. That's what I'm more worried about is as it cools off, it's maybe going to get less uh, workable, less smooth to spread out, start to clump to itself more, that kind of thing. So just trying to work through this. I didn't mean to have the music playing in the background. Sorry guys if that's distracting. I don't even know who that is. Oh, it's, what's his name? From Donnie Darko. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I have almost all of this delicious looking chocolate-esque stuff spread out and I'm going to use on half of it, I'm going to take a um, half of it I'm going to take and use a the edge on this is a little wonky because I'm using pieces from an old box. Um, I'm going to use some wax paper to see if I can get a, a really nicely smoothed um, shiny surface and sort of like uh, calendaring paper where you, you, uh, you transfer the decal onto a really smooth surface. I think that's calendaring. Pretty sure that's calendaring. We'll see. So I've got a piece of wax paper. Here we go. Now we'll lay that down just here. I'm using wax paper because I didn't want to use saran wrap because, um, well, why use saran wrap when you can use something that is made makeable from a, an organic thing. Unfortunately, most wax paper that you buy is actually made from petrochemicals anyway, so uh, that's sort of a no-go, but maybe someday, who knows, you get beeswax paper. So I'm just using a rolling pin to try to, to, to transfer, it's actually ending up not looking as nice as I wanted it to, but say let me. Okay, so I'm squishing, squishing this out, and then I'm just going to dry this outside. Um, I have no idea how long this is going to take to dry. Unfortunately, this is one of those things you can't really look up on the internet. Um, dear internet, how long does it take for gross looking? Is that, I think that really sucks. Don't do that. It sticks to wood. Get it wet, it'll probably not stick too much. Yeah, so that's the way to do it. If you want to roll directly onto the thing, you've got to have an oiled or wet um, guy. But then you're going to get extra water on your thing. It'll take longer to dry. It's probably not worth it. Probably better to go the wax paper route now. Does it peel off? Good question, Dominic. It actually does, it looks like. So you got to peel at a really low angle. That's the trick to peeling anything off. You want to shear the material along the surface, not away from the surface. And awesome, that is separating so nicely and is much smoother. And I suspect if we had used a slightly less, maybe even if you use like a silk hat, which is like those um, silicone and jute fiber or silicone and hemp fiber uh, baking sheets, you might be able to get it to um, 
might be able to get it to flatten out and separate more evenly. So there's really not that much difference between the sides, all things considered. Um, I would probably, in the interest of saving time on a real project, I'd probably just use a spatula. And I would actually maybe even use a screen printing squeegee and try to spread one big bead all the way across. Does that make sense? Probably. I wonder if you can even see me. No, probably you can't see me in there. It's talking a lot. Um, so in any case, turn that off. Uh, I hope this works. Maybe it's gonna work. I'm gonna dry this and then maybe we can send it to the printers um, sometime this week. Who knows? This is Dominic Muren, signing off.